I'm Lynette Zhang, Chief Market Analyst here at ITM Trading, which you guys probably know by now is a full service physical gold and silver dealer. But what we really do is specialize in strategies and everybody needs to have a strategy these days. I mean, it should be pretty darn obvious that we are already walking through the reset. Boy, I remember when they didn't like me saying that because it wasn't obvious. It should be obvious to everybody now. It's just, there's just so much insanity that is going on. Okay. So Friday we got the jobs reports and it was rather disappointing. I mean, it was minuscule compared to what the expectations are. And I'm sure a lot of those expectations came from all those large employers like Amazon and Walmart, et cetera, saying that they're going to add hundreds of thousands or thousands and thousands of jobs. Well, I guess that wasn't going to happen this quarter. And you can see, this is the uh, job growth bar chart. And you can see how, you know, the, the new hirings really just have not been able to get lift off, even though we have wage gains. And we're going to talk about that in a second. But in the meantime, we still have 3.2 million Americans that are long-term unemployed and benefits expired this past weekend. Nice, Labor Day weekend. And that's when the benefits expired. But a long-term unemployed person is somebody that's been unemployed for at least six months. And it's not really a very good position to be in because your skills you kind of, they are, at least the feeling is, is that you lose their, your skills. But these long-term unemployed represent 37.4% of all unemployed individuals. This is what that looks like. You know, we saw the other bar graph where we saw that big drop. drop. Well, there's that big spike up, that big drop in employment. And you can see it's worked its way down now to 5.2%, but still, and we've also heard about the wage gains, which we're going to talk about in a minute, but we still have a major issue as we hear from labor force participation rates. And there are lots of reasons that they say, so now the big test is now that they've taken the, un the additional unemployment benefits away. Is that going to make a difference in the labor force participation rate? So we'll have to pay attention to that and see what happens. But they were having challenges with that long before uh, the pandemic hit. So as you can see, this is 2008. And you can see that it's been declining. It was just barely going up when we got this extra hit. So I find that really, really interesting. But beyond that, we hear so much about how people are paying more to get the, the people that are willing to work, except when you measure it against inflation, well, there you go. Your real hourly earnings were down 1.2% for the full year ending July, 2021. What? And so even though we've seen the um, employment and the wages increase, basically all they're looking to do right now is keep it stagnant. And they're negative because of inflation is running hotter. Now, what I want you to really keep in mind is that that was always the plan from the beginning. Wages never, ever, ever, or normal wages, average wages, never, ever, ever keep pace with inflation. And much of inflation, although we're going to talk more about that in the next video, but much of this inflation is based upon the prices and services from the corporations. So this is really what's enabled all of this income and wealth inequality that we talk about all the time. You can see here on this little, on this little spreadsheet, the average wage, 1971, 9,500 bucks and the average family of four could live with one wage earner. Now in 2021, the average wage 51,480. So you would say, well, I would much rather have 
$51,480.9500, except that the dollar had a lot more value in 1971. And of course, this is the difference between Nixon taking us completely or removing gold as any level of anchor to create fiscal responsibility. So if you were paid just in gold, that would have been 225 ounces. Today, that same wage, average wage, only buys 28.07 ounces at Friday's spot close. But if you had not gotten a raise, but were just paid in the ounces of gold, that equals 412 over $412,000. Now, of course, in Biden's tax proposals, anybody earning less than 450 supposedly, supposedly are not going to be impacted by it. And, and remember, these are always how things start. They kind of sneak in and then they get broader. But this really goes to show you how that nominal confusion hides the truth because inflation is really just a currency devaluation. It is a slow devaluation if they can maintain it at that 2%. But it's a devaluation Nevertheless, make no mistake about it. And we also see it, we're seeing this happen in so many different areas. And remember, we pulled, or the central banks pulled interest rates all the way down to basically zero back in 2009. And they haven't been able to get, get lift off from that level since. And that has forced people out on the risk spectrum. We've talked about this so much. Junk bonds, look, what, what, what is a junk bond? Junk is junk. It means that they are in jeopardy. These companies that issue this debt are in jeopardy of paying interest and principal payments back. So people buy this stuff thinking, well, okay, it can go, the principal can go up and down because let me just remind you, okay, interest rates, principal value. This is when issued, so the longer the bond, the more the leverage, okay? But when interest rates go down, what happens to the principal value? It goes up. When interest rates go up, the principal value goes down. So we have been dealing with lower interest rates, right? Artificially, artificially. And as people have flooded into these bonds, it's pushed bond yields all the way down. And so at the moment, they're somewhere around 4%. And I've said this once, I will say it a gazillion times. You are not getting paid for the risk that you are taking in these junk bonds. Notice how high those yields spiked from about seven, a little bit more than seven and a half percent to over 22 percent. Well, what, what did that do to the principle of the bonds, right? Now, that's where we're at at the moment is somewhere around four percent, but inflation's running harder than, hotter than that. So in reality, junk bonds have now gone into negative territory, which means you can hold them. If you buy a junk bond now and you hold it to maturity, I'm presuming they don't default on it, which is a huge presumption into this environment, but presuming they don't, you have locked in your losses. And let me tell you, the likelihood, we've talked about this, these fragile, fragile corporations, in the environment that we are in, my bet is we are going to see massive defaults when the, when the Fed attempts to unwind this mess that they've put us into. I don't, they can't do it. I mean, that's my opinion. I can't prove it. Time is going to tell. But nominal confusion still hides the truth. That's its point. That was one of the things that those that created this whole fiat money system, they knew that. Not one man in a million understands inflation, but gold understands inflation and gold protects you from that inflation. It has tested. 
nothing else has been tested the way gold has been tested and the way gold holders have been tested. We know this. But you know, one of the answers to what happened in 2008, because this is not disjointed. I know people like to think, oh, well, that was then, this is now. No, that was then, the system died. I said it at the time, I've said it ever since. It was put on life support and the life support was debt and free money. So what did they do? They encouraged people to go back to school and take out those student loans. And then they turned all of those loans, all that debt into financial products. Interesting. And sold these financial products back to Main Street. You are not getting paid for the risk if you're in any of these products. And and don't assume that you're not, especially if you have institutional investors that are investing your money that you deposit into the 401ks, mutual funds, ETFs, pensions, etc. And we know that those payments have been deferred. And now I love this piece really. And now borrowers have four more months without payments. Well, you know, a lot of what's happening with the Fed is to hide all of these truths because if you knew this and you had money there, you might take that money out. But for borrowers, okay, now this is the one that I like. Experts weigh in on the best way to spend that extra cash. Why? Because we are a consumer driven economy. And in a consumer driven economy, we must consume. We're going to come back to that more in a minute. Now, here's one of my, I'm being very, 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 very facetious when I say this. Here's one of my favorite people, Larry Summers, who happened to be treasury secretary back in 98 during long-term capital management and was definitely one of the people that was absolutely instrumental in having the derivatives market OTC, over the counter, so outside of you. So this is why he is definitely, um, there are a number of reasons, but he is definitely not my favorite person. But he does make a good point here. And so I needed to bring this up. Big increases, so he he said, oh, let me go back so I can read a little bit up there. Strong research from the Dallas Fed confirms my suspicions. Big increases in house prices presage substantial increases in measured housing inflation that will tend to consumer price measures up. What does all that gobbledygook mean? Well, I'll tell you that in a second. But this is the Case Shiller Home Price Index. And you can see, I mean, goodness gracious, this is where we were in 2006. This is where we are today. And you can see the speed of this recovery because the government target, I shouldn't say the government, the central banks targeted real estate for reflation because it runs 40%. We'll talk about this a little bit more, but it's 40% of the CPI of the inflation that they talk about. Not only that, but surging house prices expected to propel rent increases and the OER, the owner equivalent rent. So I go to you, this is what goes into the inflation numbers, which is one reason why we know they're not real. But I go to you and I say, okay, you own your house. If you had to rent your house from yourself, how much do you think you would charge yourself? But we've seen rents exploding. Do you think that actually goes into it? No, that's transitory, food, energy, and real rents don't really, they don't have as big a weighting. But the OER is like a 40% weighting. So they did that because typically house prices do not explode 23% in a year. They're actually, they used to be relatively stable or with relatively consistent 
but lower price appreciation. So that's why they set that up like that, but it's not working anymore. So the reality is, is when they report inflation because of the OER and the equivalent, the owner equivalent rent, we haven't seen anything yet. And even this is, this is, I don't agree with a lot of what Larry did and says, but every time you hear that inflation is transitory, remember that double house price inflation hasn't yet shown up in the indexes. Housing represents 40% of core CPI, consumer price index, 40%, and it's not shown up yet. And further, he says, I wish in the midst of the, his optimistic take on inflation at the Jackson Hole Symposium, Federal Reserve Chairman Powell had discussed housing, lags in wage responses to labor shortages, which we already looked at, actually down 1.2% year over year, um, or the many other factors, or the many other factors suggesting the economy is entrenching rapid inflation. Now he would not say hyperinflation because of course he's really part of this whole machine, nor will he ever take responsibility for the, in my opinion, extraordinarily bad choices that he made. However, I do agree with him here. And what he's really saying you know, rapid inflation, this is, this leads to, this leads to loss of confidence and loss of control. So we have many things that are going on. We're going to talk more about them as we go through it, but this is definitely what I'm, I'm going to let you know, we have some great behind the scenes footage because today we start the, um, solar Thank you. The solar up at my bug out house. And we're going to be recording and documenting all of that and sharing it with you. And we're also going to be actually recording from the studio up there. So we'll this week. So we'll see how that goes, but I'm super excited about that. Just, you want to go to the Twitter at ITM trading underscore Zhang, uh, because even though we're not going to release everything just yet, we're, we're setting things up. I'm sure that, uh, Edgar or Megan will release some of these behind the scenes, but if you haven't already done so because of how rapidly things are changing, you definitely want to subscribe and hit those bell notifications. If you like this, please give us a thumbs up, make sure you leave a comment. And of course, share, 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 because honestly, ignorance does not make you immune. It just leaves you vulnerable. And I don't like what I'm seeing out there. Things are changing. They can change on a dime. So you need to be prepared. And until next we meet, Please, please be safe out there. Bye-bye.